Something that really stuck to my mind was from Islam's Black Slaves and by Ronald Segal and on page 123 he quotes a an ambassador to Iran Lady Mary Eleanor and she made an interesting comment about black slaves in Persia actually being uh, even respected in trade well even better than other slaves and how they became part of the society basically the slaves you know without any regard to their skin color or anything especially if they're Nubians or Ethiopians and this was as late as 1850 and I say as late because I assume that there's a growing amount of racism at least starting around the 17th century that's when the the slave trade of of Africans starts picking up and the the so this history because when people think that so-called black people were dominated by other people or hated against for all history it makes it harder to deal with issues. This is from the myth of continents, and he cites someone who, who an Afro, a so-called Afrocentric person, Asante, and Asante cites Ibn Khaldun and Ibn Battuta as having uniquely African sensibilities, part of a Pan-African heritage. But the author of this book, talking about that says it's Iraq and he says the author he says that he gives quotes about Ibn Battuta and Ibn Khaldun that are that are racist and that's how I became skeptical about translation and the uh, Negro Land of the Arabs by William Cooley which is basically colonial propaganda but it's Earlier, it, it was written in the 1840s, and the translations are different from the later ones. For example, he says, quote, quoting Ibn Khaldun, he says, Abu Issaq sold him a model and erected the edifice with plaster and all kinds of ornaments. He does not say that Abu Issaq introduced architecture to Mali. And this is in the 1840s that this was written. So it was later colonial translations that change that. 